The World Health Organization is calling for all gay men to start taking preventative HIV pills. But are these pills effective, and is it wrong to circle out just gay men? Hey guys, Tara here for DNews, and there's been a lot of buzz lately surrounding HIV. You might have seen a recent news article about a four-year-old girl who was born with HIV and was thought to be cured until the virus re-emerged years later. It's a sad story, but it highlights just how little we know about a virus that's been around for almost a century. It's been known for quite a while now that certain people are more likely to contract HIV than others. Homosexual men, for example, are 20 times more likely to get infected from an HIV-positive partner than men in heterosexual relationships. And women are twice as likely to get infected. But why is that? Well, up until now, we've chalked it up to biology. The mucous membranes surrounding the vagina and the anus have a high chance of tearing during intercourse, making it easier for the virus to spread. But new research published this week in Science shows that isn't the only reason. The bigger culprit may lie in the virus's DNA. A team of scientists at Microsoft and Emory University have been conducting a decades-long study of over 20,000 discordant heterosexual couples in Zambia. That is couples where one of the partners is HIV positive and the other is negative. Over the course of that study, 137 of those couples saw the transmission of HIV from one partner to the other. So researchers have been closely examining them to see how the virus differs from one partner to another. Now, typically when HIV is transmitted through sex, it's a single virus that gets into a cell and infects it. And once that cell is infected, the virus replicates and spreads to other cells where mutations get introduced into its DNA. So you end up with a large number of different HIV versions, all with different DNA sequences. But a single virus is all it takes to get HIV, and your body's natural ability to filter it out is what determines your likelihood of getting infected. Scientists are now discovering that only the strongest and most evolutionary fit versions of the virus will infect a man when he has sex with an HIV-positive woman. Again, this comes back to biology. The cells on the penis are harder to infect than those in the vagina or anus. But what's striking about this study is that the risk factors known to affect the odds of transmission are actually affecting the selection process. Viruses in newly infected men were found to be more fit than viruses in newly infected women. In other words, men have a stricter barrier of entry than women, but men who do contract HIV are probably infected with a very fit version of the virus, which could explain why it passes so easily amongst homosexual men. It's no surprise that the World Health Organization is now taking steps to prevent the spread of HIV, and their recommendation is controversial, to say the least. Earlier this week, they released a report urging all homosexual men, even those who don't have the virus, to take a daily pill designed to prevent HIV infection. The pill is called Truveda, and it's a combination of two drugs known to inhibit the reproduction of HIV. Currently, it's used to treat people who already have the virus, but if taken daily, it can also greatly reduce someone's chances of getting infected. The pill has already been approved in several countries, including the US, but many are worried about its potential side effects. They also fear that the existence of such a pill could encourage risky sexual behavior. But the World Health Organization says those worries are unwarranted and that over time, the risk of adverse events is low. Right now, the biggest hurdle with the pill is its price. The drug alone costs over $10,000 a year in the United States, and that's before you add in all of the other costs like quarterly HIV testing. Still, more and more insurance companies are agreeing to cover Truveda, and its manufacturer has started licensing the pill in lower income countries where HIV is more common. Places like South Africa and India, the drug only costs about $100 a year, which is roughly the same cost as a year of treatment for someone with HIV. Back in May, the CDC also backed Truveda, but they recommended it only for high-risk men, meaning gay men who have either been diagnosed with an STD or had anal sex without a condom in the past six months. The recommendation given by the World Health Organization is much more general and includes all gay men regardless of their sexual habits. But officials say that men who use the drug over a 10-year period could reduce HIV transmission by 20 to 25 percent worldwide. That is one million new infections they'd be preventing. The World Health Organization plans to release more detailed guidelines in the coming months to account for all of the other high-risk groups outside of homosexual men, but in the meantime, they hope these findings will urge countries to make HIV prevention a priority. What do you guys think? Is it unethical to ask all gay men to take an expensive and potentially dangerous pill, even if they practice safe sex? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thank you guys for watching.